This is important. Make sure the processor's triangle aligns with the motherboard's triangle. From a very short distance, let the processor fall onto the socket. It should fit in by its own weight without forcing it. Then, you must secure it with the lever. We will apply an adequate amount of thermal paste so that it does not exceed the surface of the processor. We will place the liquid cooling pump and screw it in an X pattern so that the copper base of the pump is completely flat against the processor's surface. And we finish securing it, as we have said, in an X pattern. To facilitate installation, we will add the discs, cooling and memory before placing the motherboard in the case. We now proceed to insert an M2 disc into the PCI Express slot of the motherboard. We screw it in without forcing. Usually, the covers that conceal the disc often come with a thermal strip that makes contact with the disc. If we don't fill all four memory slots, we should place the memories in slots two and four without pushing too hard until they click into the correct position. It's important to note that one pin zone is shorter than the other. To prevent the motherboard from making contact with the chassis, we screw it onto these female screws. Remember, you should never force the components nor over-tighten the screws. It's advisable to route as much wiring as possible to the other side of the side chamber to achieve more effective airflow. Once the radiator is in place, we secure it by screwing it to the chassis. For a less complicated installation, we can connect the cables to a modular power supply before inserting it into the case. We route the 24-pin connector to the other side of the chamber to connect it to the motherboard. This cable is responsible for supplying the necessary power. There is another connector that we must also insert into the motherboard which, depending on the power of the supply in the board, usually has 4, 8 or up to 12 pins. We add fans to achieve good airflow. Preferably, we usually install the graphics card in the fastest PCI Express slot, which is typically the one closest to the processor.
we will supply power to the graphics card with the 8-pin connector. Keep in mind that there are graphics cards with more pins, so the wattage consumption can be higher. The USB or USB-C ports located on the front panel need a connection to the motherboard. For this, we will use the blue USB 3.0 cable and the USB-C cable. The connection is usually next to the motherboard's 24-pin connector. We must also connect the headphone and microphone inputs as well as the reset and power buttons, which are located on the front panel. This way, we enable the microphone and headphone inputs, the power button and the reset button. Additionally, it's necessary to supply power to the fans. For this, we will use a hub, which also allows us to control the colors of our RGB fans. Once all connections are made, we supply power to the hub. With everything ready, we reveal the side panel and all that's left is to install the operating system.